So our next presenter, we're, we're honored to have uh, Dr. Jay Ma. He's the um, so he's uh, come from the Department of Physiology. He's a professor and um, and chairman of the Department of Physiology at the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. He did his med medical degree in China, and then he did a master's in pharmacology um, at the Chinese Academy of Medical Sciences in Beijing. And then he um, went to the University of South Carolina in Charleston to do a PhD in biochemistry. He spent a number of years uh, at the in uh, South Carolina in the neurosciences department, and then moved to the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center and became a professor uh, in the Department of uh, Medicine, Endocrinology, and Physiology there. And he's here to, to speak to us about phenofibrate effect on diabetic retinopathy, a target and mechanism of action. Thank you very much for the introduction and uh, uh, Dr. Wu for the invitation. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here uh, to meet a lot of uh, old friends and to talk about the science after this. So today I'd like to uh, just talk as a, the most of for, uh, for clinicians, I'd like to talk about phenofibrate. And uh, I went to several places to talk about this. And most of the endocrinologists are familiar with this drug, but the uh, ophthalmologists, uh, a lot of them don't, are not familiar. So just like to give you some uh, uh, background about the phenofibrate, why we're interested in, uh, in a retinopathy study. And uh, in the late, we have a, a late part, we have a, a mechanism study, <coughs> very uh, detailed uh, molecular mechanism. Probably will not uh, talk too much because of, uh, you, you're probably not interested in that. Um, yeah, this, I don't need to say too much about the eye structure. Just to show the eye have a special uh, uh, vascular, vascular uh, st uh, structure. And the inner retina is supplied by uh, the vas retina vascular bed here in the inner retina. In the outer retina, absolutely no vessel because uh, there's a photoreceptor has to occupy every piece of space because uh, uh, to increase our <coughs> light sensitivity. In the back <coughs> is a choroid vessel uh, which has no tight junction and uh, therefore there are two tight junction, uh, two uh, blood retina barriers. One is uh, the tight junction in the inner uh, in, uh, in the endothelial cell, uh, out barrier is the uh, RPE. Is a, there is no tight junction here. Here you, you can consider ca there's capillaries, there's a choroid as a large vessel, and therefore it's the RPE control what to allow to flow through the to to the retina to supply the out retina nutrition. And uh, we studied diabetic retinopathy for this many years, and as you know, diabetic retinopathy now is considered <coughs> a, a chronic uh, inflammatory disease uh, because there's some uh, me, uh, some uh, mechanism, some uh, evidence for for example to have a leukocytosis, leukocyte uh, adhere to the endothelium and damage the blood retina barrier and cause the vascular leakage, and uh, that this is uh, considered uh, the major cause of a diabetic macular edema. <coughs> in the later stage, of course, you, you see the parasite loss and uh, then uh, neovascularization, and this is the proliferative stage. So what is phenofibrate? Phenofibrate is not a new drug. It's a, it's a drug for clinical for almost 40 years, and it's a small molecule, PIPA alpha agonist, and it's, uh, it's originally designed to uh, came to the market for the use of a lowered lipid triglyceride. And uh, it, it's been used, as I said, for hyperlipidemia for uh, almost 40 years. And in active form is phenofibric acid. So is a, a phenofibrate is an ester form and uh, get into the blood, convert to a phenofibric acid, which is active form. It uh, goes through re a renal excretion and uh, is FDA approved and uh, is uh, uh, inexpensive, therefore, we believe this is the, uh, is it was solved some problem for the poor patient because 67 cents per day, uh, the patient can, can uh, this is the dose we daily used. <coughs> and uh, 
later, this be used for, as I said, many years. Uh, later, we have two large clinical trials, and this is the one uh, associated the phenofiber with the diabetic novice. One is called a field study, another is called a, uh, a core study. And uh, I will talk about, about uh, this, uh, the field study. This is the one published in Lancet 2007. And the uh, phenofibrate is a, a lipid drug, lower lipid drug. So therefore, uh, Abbott sponsored uh, a large clinical trial, 10,000 patients, followed for fi five years, <coughs> for uh, all type two diabetes, because type two associated with high, high lipid and obesity. Therefore, they believe this, uh, uh, this drug may uh, improve the lipid profile and uh, therefore benefit the cardiovascular system. And follow the, so the 5,000 for, uh, for, uh, for placebo, another 5,000 for the treatment. But the, for the uh, primary uh, indicator, the cardiovascular protection was not very good. In five years, very disappointing, almost no protection. But accidentally, I mean the, not accidentally, <coughs> the secondary parameter, they find that the eye, uh, the patient in the treatment group was significantly improved. Uh, edema, and uh, you see the dif big difference. The laser surgery, and you see in five years, have a big difference. 32, in total, is about a 32% uh, decreased uh, progression of a diabetic novice. Uh, so this is the first oral drug, uh, to my knowledge, or ever, to show it's such a uh, proved uh, efficacy in patients. You know, a lot of drugs in animal model works, but in, in human, it doesn't work. Because in, uh, in uh, retina disease is hard because the blood retina barrier, a lot of drugs you orally take cannot get into retina to sufficient uh, concentration. So two uh, in 2009, two years after this, there's another paper published in the New England uh, Journal of Medicine <coughs> they they used the f about 12,000 patients, followed for four, uh, four years, and uh, about a half used the statin alone, another half uh, used uh, uh, statin plus phenofibrate. There's all type two diabetes. They almost uh, identical uh, result they, they reported, and 40% improve in uh, retinopathy uh, in these two groups. There's those two papers <coughs> really uh, uh, cause our attention. So what is the, why is the phenofibrate is, a, is a so effective and the what's the mechanism, what is the target? <coughs> that time, a lot of people still feel this could be lipid or just off-target, <coughs> off-target because it's a small molecule, could be off-target effect. And then we look at the uh, PIPA, uh, PIPA uh, family. There's three members, PIPA alpha, uh, gamma, and beta. They all have a similar uh, structure and uh, they are, uh, they are in involved in lipid, in lipid uh, uh, metabolism. And here is uh, uh, the three, three members, and uh, PIPA alpha, uh, PIPA uh, gamma, uh, PIPA beta, and the delta, they're, they're the same, same. So this is the uh, this tissue distribution and uh, their known function. So first, we, <coughs> we want to know, <coughs> is this a, is really the lipid effect because uh, a lot of people argue maybe lower lipid can affect the retinopathy. So we choose to use type one diabetes model because type one usually has no uh, no uh, hyperlipidemia uh, issue. So we use the uh, uh, type one, and uh, we use the uh, assay. We use the called the vascular permeability assay. Basically, you inject some uh, marker or tracer into the vessel after circulation. Uh -huh and uh, then you perfuse out from the, the vessel. Then you dissect the retina, see how much the, the marker, I mean the tracer, uh, get into the retina. The usually the tracer we use is a similar size to albumin. Usually it's FITC labeled albumin or uh, Evans Blue uh, labeled albumin. So here you can see in the normal and the type one diabetes, you have sig significantly increased the vascular permeability and uh, after phenofibrate oral treatment, for uh, eight weeks, and you see the significant decline. And uh, then we use the mouse model, which is a genetic mouse. This is the STZ induced, which is STZ is a chemical, and inject, and uh, specifically destroy the beta cell, and therefore generate a type one diabetes. A PETA is a, is a, is a, is a mouse model for di di uh, diabetes. Originally, early uh, paper, you see, 
people call it type 2 because they have a, a, a insulin level no, is normal, but the insulin has a mutation. Therefore, it's not, not functional. Therefore, now people believe this is the type 1 uh, model, and this is a genetic model, and pretty reliable, easy to use. And you guys, as you can see, have significant increased vascular permeability, and after the phenofibrillary treatment, have a declined vascular permeability. Another assay we use the, called the uh, leukostasis assay, and basically you, you know, flush and uh, use perfusion to flush out all the circulating blood cells. And uh, as in normal, then you stand the you stand the vessel. And normally, in normal condition, non-diabetes, you see the pretty smooth endothelium. There's no uh, cells stay in the cell. It should stay in the vessel. And uh, in diabetes, you see some leukocyte adhere to the to the endothelium. And therefore, after perfusion, you cannot remove them. That's called a leukostasis. And after the phenofibrillary treatment, those cells uh, apparently are decreased. Then you can quantify them in the retina. So retina, you flat mount, you can see significant decreased uh, um, the inflammation in the, uh, in the retina. And another, uh, as I said, uh, leukocyte, I mean, uh, the pericyte drop out and the degeneration of a uh, and uh, capillary is, a, is another, uh, another pathological change in diabetic retinopathy. We also did the uh, so-called pericyte quantification and the uh, uh, ghost vessel quantification. Here the, you see this in diabetes con condition, you have, see lots of the ghost vessel. All the cells are die. Only the there's a membrane left. They're called the ghost uh, capillaries. And also we do the double staining of endothelial marker and the uh, uh, pericyte marker. You can quantify the ratio. As you can see here, in diabetes, have a, the so-called so acellular capillaries, such as this, have increased. In the phenofibrillary uh, oral treatment, significantly decreased the vascular degeneration. And uh, then you can see the, uh, the pericyte, uh, pericyte uh, ghost is also decreased. And uh, you see the pericyte number uh, is uh, increased back and compared to diabetes. So therefore, this, uh, we believe that uh, phenofibrin indeed will benefit, uh, benefit uh, uh, the type 1 diabetes. Then next question we ask, is this through PIPA alpha or off target? Then we use the PIPA alpha uh, knockout animal. And uh <coughs> so here, uh, you, we induce diabetes in um, wild type and a PIPA alpha knockout. In those mice have no PIPA alpha, then we apply it uh, phenofibrate. As you can see here, in the wild type, and uh, you, you can see the uh, significant improvement of a parasite uh, survival by phenofibrate from this, this non-diabetic, uh, diabetic, and diabetic with phenofibrate significantly improve. But in uh, people have a knockout with diabetes, have even more uh, drop of uh, parasite number. And when you use, uh, uh, when you use uh, phenofibrate, there's no rescue. And the same thing is a cellular capillary. You see here, and they can decrease by phenofibrate. Here has no change. So that means uh, this effect on uh, vasculature is dependent on uh, PIPA alpha. Then we isolate, uh, we isolate the parasite and uh, uh, use primary culture, isolate the parasite from the retina. Then we did a tunnel uh, apoptosis assay. And as you can see, we used the palmitate, which is oxygen, similar. This is the uh, commonly used dresser for uh, uh, diabetes. As you can see here, uh, the increase the cell from wild type of mice and have a significantly rescued by, uh, by, by phenofibrate, but uh, the cell from, from, the, uh, from the knockout cell, knockout mice, have no rescue. That means uh, uh, this uh, parasite protective effect is indeed dependent on PIPA alpha. Here it shows the vascular permeability assay. Uh, again, this is the uh, tracer into the vessel. As you can see here, uh, this in the normal condition, the knockout and, not, uh, and the wild type has no significant difference in vascular leakage. But in diabetes condition, this is the diabetes wild type and the diabetes knockout. See the diabetes knockout have significant higher vascular leakage compared to non-diabetic no, uh, uh, diabetic uh, wild type mice. And when you apply phenofibrate uh, treatment, you can see in wild type 
is a significant decrease but in the knockout animal phenofibrin has no effect. There's, uh, there's a further evidence that the phenofibrin effect is indeed through PIPA alpha rather than optogen uh, effect. And uh, then we use the, we clone the PIPA alpha uh, into uh, adenovirus. We use adenovirus infection and we can achieve the same thing. So there's there is no drug, no phenofibrin. That means indeed is phenofibrin, is PIPA alpha is indeed uh, doing the job rather than the chemical has a other another high target. So next question we, we ask is, can this therapeutic effect, uh, it, where is the target? Is it systemic and uh, then affect the eye or is it in the, the target in the eye? So it, that means can we achieve this effect by intraocular uh, injection? Then we inject the phenofibrate into the, uh, into the uh, vitreous and uh, in, di in diabetic animal. And as you can see, we can see the same thing as the oral treatment. That means there's no systemic use of the drug. That means this drug target indeed is in the, in the, in the eye. See, this is the so-called OIR model, oxygen-induced retinopathy model. This is the ischemia-induced uh, uh, neovascularization model. And uh, as you can see here, uh, one dose injection have significant decrease of neovascularization in, the, uh, in this uh, oxygen-induced retinopathy model. And uh, after injection, you see the VEGF, this is the standing for section of, uh, of the retina, and this is the DAPI standing for nucleus. And you can see uh, for VEGF signal, you see a significant increase VEGF signal, and about the phenofibrate decrease VEGF signal in the, in the eye. And so same thing is the, is the uh, VEGF Western blot uh, in, the retin in the retina preparation. Then we did the uh, in vitro tube formation assay. You know, endothelial cell, and uh, you put it in, in culture in certain condition, they have a tendency to form tube-like structure. After you add phenofibrate, uh, the tube formation is uh, disturbed. And uh, another is migration assay. You scratch in the monolayer of the cell, and uh, after 24 hours, the cell migrate toward the, the, uh, the acellular room, and with the phenofibrate, the migration is slowed down. So now we know this target in the, in the eye. Then we start to turn our eye in of the attention to the retina, to the eye. So we start to study what, where is, is PIPA alpha indeed expressed in the, in the retina and uh, is, it, is, is it changed in diabetes condition. Then we uh, uh, collaborated with uh, Dr. Michael Bolton and uh, collected several uh, six patient eyes donor uh, with diabetic retinopathy, it's so non-proliferative, because proliferative too much change. We use non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy. We, we got uh, several uh, donors without diabetes. Then we did an immunostaining for PIPA alpha. As you, see, you can see here, and the PIPA alpha is widely expressed in the almost all the layers of the retina. And uh, in, uh, in, in the uh, diabetic <coughs> donor, you see the significant decrease the standing signal. And uh, the same thing, we use the rat, diabetic rat, you see significant decrease the uh, uh, PIPA alpha signal. Then we did the Western plot, compare the all the three members of the family and the PIPA alpha, beta, and the gamma. And uh, this each line uh, represents the indi indi individual rat. If you can see here, the diabetic rat have a significantly lower, uh, significantly lower uh, PIPA alpha, but the PIPA gamma is so low, it's not, not detectable, at least in use as a commercial antibody, and the PIPA gamma is almost no change, and this is statistic uh, uh, difference. And uh, then we use the uh, other animal models, and Akita is a genetic model, you see also decrease in Akita model, and uh, use the type two, is a DBDB is a type two model, you can see here, uh, is only PIPA alpha change, but the PIPA gamma is not a change. So that means uh, that's explains why the PIPA gamma agonist is not so effective for retinopathy, but the PIPA alpha agonist uh, phenofibrin is uh, so far is the only effective uh, uh, ligand. Then we uh, we use the uh, use knockout animal. You can see the leukostasis. Uh, leukostasis indeed after induced uh, diabetes, in, indeed without PIPA alpha, and you see have see more significantly more leukostasis compared to wild type. 
Uh, then we uh, inject the PIPA alpha uh, virus. That means the virus express PIPA alpha. This without phenotype, just use PIPA alpha. Inject the diabetes and uh, animal uh, in the, into the eye. You can see the PIPA alpha alone can decrease the leukocytosis. So that means in this uh, PIPA alpha is indeed endogenous uh, protective factor in the eye. So, uh, so now we go to the uh, mechanism. I don't know how much you are interested. I'll probably just be brief. One thing I'd like to know uh, to show this we our finding in the next talk of uh, today. I will talk about the uh, uh, wind pathway. This is the pathway we identified play a major role in inflammation angiogenesis in diabetic retinopathy. So I will give you a brief uh, introduction about the what is wind pa wind pathway. This is the simplified wind pathway, and the wind pathway including the co-receptor ARP and the phrasal receptor and the 19 wind ligand. And the wind, when if in the absence of wind ligand, these two receptors are separate. And the beta catenin, which is a transcription factor, is trapped by the uh, kinase complex. Therefore, it's constantly phosphorylated. When the beta catenin is phosphorylated, and it become uh, unstable, uh, degraded, and therefore cannot get in the, in the nucleus activity gene expression. Upon binding of a wind ligand to the co-receptors, uh, this ARP6 become phosphorylated and recruit axin, therefore dissociate this complex. And beta catenin become free and not phosphorylated. Therefore, the beta catenin accumulate, stabilized, and get into the nucleus, find it to uh, uh, TCF and uh, activated uh, number of genes, including several genes associated with diabetes neuropathy, uh, VEGF, PDGF, IKM1, CDGF, TNF alpha. Therefore, we believe uh, this pathway controls so many inflammatory factor and angiogenic factor and the uh, fibrogenic factor. Therefore, with a promising fact, is a fa uh, pathway for diabetes neuropathy. Then, so this is the. Uh, this is our hypothesis, working hypothesis. Since it's, it's VEGF, PDGF control the near angiogenesis, ICAM1, TNF alpha control inflammation, vascular leakage, CDGF control uh, basement membrane uh, thickening and fibrosis. Therefore, if we, I feel if this, uh, uh, we can block this pathway, we can simultaneously block s several factors. Sh theoretically, it should be better than block one individual uh, growth factor there. So we first, we want to know whether this pathway is indeed changed and uh, then you change it by phenofibrin. Several years ago, we found the uh, wind pathway indeed is activated in di several diabetic animal model in uh, human donor eyes with diabetes and obviously. Then we want, here we show the phenofibrin, the beta catenin is, uh, we use this as a major and the uh, uh, beta catenin is in, in the indeed increased in the diabetic retinopathy model in the, in the retina, and after treatment of phenofibrate, the beta catenin is decreased. So it's in the Akita, same thing, in the increase in diabetes and the decrease by phenofibrate treatment. And this is a so-called uh, uh, report of mice. Looks uh, pretty ugly. This is the beta gal staining of the retina. And this, what well, this mouse is a transgenic, and they put the beta gal uh, like Z reporter mice in reporter gene under the control of a promoter. Uh, uh, this promoter is controlled the be uh, beta catenin, which is a wind reporter mice. When, whenever you see the wind activation, you, when you stand with the uh, X scale, you see the blue color. And uh, here you see um, in the transgenic animal, in the non diabetic, and the no, almost no blue color. In diabetes, you see pretty strong blue color. After the phenol. Uh, February treatment, the blue color is decreased. And of course, in cell culture, we can do the luciferous assay, the similar, pro, uh, similar uh, uh, principle. Uh, in, in instead of a beta gal, the, the reporter gene is a luciferous. You see the luciferous is significantly decreased by uh, phenofibrate treatment. And then we in, uh, directly use wind ligand to induce the uh, beta catenin stabilization. Yeah, the same thing, PIPA alpha can significantly decrease beta catenin in, 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 uh, in the, uh, this model. So therefore, we believe it's a 
is a is just a, a indeed just a, a people alpha has interaction functional interaction with the window password. So to summarize this part, we found a phenofibrin has a therapeutic effect on di type one diabetes. So we present we give this uh, we con uh, with this uh, result we uh, we early stage we send this result in collaboration with the uh, uh, field study uh, PI uh, Dr. Keach. We contact him. We give him this. We invite him to our uh, university, and we give the, all the data. He used this data to uh, convince uh, Abbott to start start. Uh, so now the uh, uh, Abbott has approved the clinical trial for type one diabetes. So this is uh, because of our result convinced them that could be uh, work for type one. Therefore, they are studying the type one diabetes clinical trial now. And the phenofibrin inhibits angiogenesis. So this drug target uh, is in the in the retina. So beneficial effect is PIPA alpha dependent, and the PIPA alpha downregulated uh, downregulate in the diabetes. Therefore, the this downregulation itself contributes to diabetic novelty. Therefore, we found the PIPA alpha is endogenous anti-inflammatory factor, and therefore it represents uh, important um, important drug target. So we believe uh, this uh, uh, phenofibrate or PIPA alpha as a PIPA alpha agonist has a future in the clinic because a lot of poor patient they cannot put, uh, afford the avastin lucentis and uh, uh, a lot of countries they, they cannot afford the, afford the intravitreal injection. So PIPA, this uh, phenofibrate is off patent drug. There's no patent. It's a, a generic drug. And 65 cents per day, a patient can just without without any insurance, patient can take it. So now it routinely, uh, this drug has been proved in Australia for uh, routine treatment for diabetic novelty. In uh, European uh, Union, uh, it is also applied and uh, is uh, considering phenofibrate as a uh, drug for the treatment of a diabetic novelty. Yeah. We do have papers on diabetic novelty. Have you or anyone else used uh, this Yes, we are working on that. We don't know yet. So there's some model we are, we're trying to develop now. <coughs> so how does PIPA alpha? This, this is a more mechanism study. I don't think I want to go too deep. So one thing I want to know, I want to let you know, we found the, uh, so there's no direct in literature. We found the PIPA gamma, not the interaction with the wind password, but the PIPA alpha zero, there's no nothing. So then how does PIPA alpha, but in our model, Indeed, we showed you PIPA alpha regular wind pathway. How? So we use, uh, we th eventually we found that this is the VLDLR, the very low density lipoprotein. This one is well known to be regulated by PIPA alpha. So we found that this one also uh, itself is a regulator of a wind pathway. So this is the paper 2007. We found that this uh, VLDLR is a <coughs> regulator of a wind pathway. And here shows a phenofibrate. Uh, the downregulated wind receptor, but uh, upregulated in the VLDR in the same cell. Here it shows <coughs> phenofibrate upregulated uh, uh, VLDR by immunostaining, the antibody staining, this ligand binding, both shows a VLDR increase. This is the VLDR promoter, is uh, increased by, uh, then, then the how VLDR <coughs> interact with the wind pathway, and <coughs> we found that there's a lot of molecular biology study. We did a lot of mutant deletion. Uh, eventually, we found that it's the extracellular domain of VLDR really dimerized with uh, here, just the, the both in the same family. ARP6 is wind receptor. It's very essential for, for the wind activation in the retina. And uh, they both have a large extracellular domain. So now our conclusion, I don't want to go detail to, uh, to, to waste more time. You just want to know, uh, you know, this two we identified is the dimerize, you know, they regulate each other by at the protein level. The dimerize destabilize ARP6, therefore internalize, uh, enhance the internalization ARP6. So that's what we, we found. And we, this is the mutant we made, and we found this alone, is that the extracellular domain alone can inhibit the wind pathway. And uh, uh, then we did uh, uh, find the, the uh, this degeneration, degradation 
of ARP6 indeed is enhanced by uh, the VRDR. And uh, this is the conclusion. They eventually, you find the uh, immunocoprecipitation, they do form the dimer uh, together. So that this is something we, we uh, this part, we, we have a more detailed, I today I'm not going to talk uh, in detail. So we, we just like, we just let, let you know this is a phenol, uh, we are the R function as a negative regulator of wind pathway. Uh, the wind inhibit, uh, inhibiting effect is mediated through VRDR transcription, at least in part through this. Of course, there's some uh, other groups found that there's MPK and NF kappa B. Yes, we agree, that's probably true. But this is probably people have a multiple regulation uh, target but this VRDR probably is one of the targeted. So take home message is phenol 5 is a activated PIPA alpha, and the PIPA, PIPA alpha can downregulate VRDR, uh, uh, can pr uh, down VRDR production, therefore in the liver, and uh, therefore lower the lipid level. And the other side is a VRDR receptor increased and uh, inhibit the wind pathway, then inhibit the bunch of uh, inflammatory angiogenic factors, and this uh, the mechanism we believe is uh, responsible for the phenofibrate effect on diabetic retinopathy. And the conclusion is that PIPA alpha is a promising new drug target for, for PIPA alpha is for diabetic retinopathy. And the PIPA alpha is a regulator of wind pathway. And uh, then we find that the receptor receptor, the VRDR and the RP6, the interaction represent a new mechanism for wind pathway regulation. And here are the people working I, in, the, in my lab did uh, contribute to the project. And uh, Yin Chen uh, and uh, uh, Ting Wang Li, the student, uh, did a contribu major contribution. And we got a lot of wind pass we construct with uh, Dr. Xi He from Harvard. And we got the collaboration with Tony Teach from University of Sydney and uh, from uh, Dr. Lyons as well. Thank you. <coughs> Yes, I just talked to uh, Dr. Keech. He and I, we approached ADA to see if ADA can use this. ADA said we have to get FDA approval. And we approach FDA. FDA's standard is uh, if you use clinical uh, trial, you target it on the primary uh, disease. If that doesn't work, that's it. There's no, not approval. Even your secondary finding is effective for another disease, and you have to start a new clinical trial. And that, therefore, if you want FDA approval, somebody have to invest in the another five years for just for diabetic retinopathy trial, which is, uh, I think, is not, not, a, not a good way to do it. So, so the politics, <coughs> I think, is pretty fascinating. The big issue holding it back is the amount of money necessary to get an FDA clinical trial is unlikely to occur for a product which is not under patent and cannot be perfected. And, and you run into that. Yeah, that's tragic. Yeah, this is just another good point. This is off pattern. That's why nobody wants to develop this because there's no protection. So I know several uh, pharmaceutical companies like Genentech, they are developing new PIPA alpha agonist, and which is maybe the same. I don't know, maybe the maybe same. effect. <laughs> yeah, but uh, they just uh, want to, because they have a pattern. And uh, I know Abbott tried to, uh, to develop uh, phenofibric acid, which is, uh, is an active form of this. They try to sell that part because they have pattern on that. And uh, 
just have no pattern phenotypic, which is a cost more, and the final effect could be the same. I, I, I don't understand this. Yeah. So one other issue is if you look at this, <coughs> it sounded like you were using this in clinical trials, and they showed in general there was uh, a protective effect over time. Yeah. Have there been clinical trials showing that those who already have anxiety, macular edema, and others, that, that it ameliorates the disease once it's already in process, or is it largely observed? We worse. No, we, we, haven't, we haven't seen that clinical trial yet. <coughs> is there uh, sufficiency evidence whether or not other than upgraded vision or not shots? Yes. Even if it is a one drop shot, is it likely to become a mandatory drug? It's, uh, it's mainly for heart, I think. Yeah. So who has made that up? Where in the record do you see that? That it's the, the fact that you should be using the standard and spending around the standard. And what, what is the heart problem? Yeah, I know in uh, Australia, they routinely use the, the uh, up diagnose of uh, uh, diabetes. Routinely, you take this phenotypate, and doesn't matter you have a written option. Because also, I didn't talk about the other complication. It's a reduced amputation rate and the reduced uh, nephropathy as well. So therefore, it's a broad beneficial effect. So it's anti-inflammation. So should the patient should take it uh, routinely, but uh, uh, in this country, I don't know wh how, how long it will take to come to the community. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs>